We started our travels more than two years ago and when looking back on it, we can't believe how wet behind the ears we actually were. What we worried about before actually wasn't an issue. It was the things we hadn't considered nearly ended our travels before we even got started. Today, we're going to share our top five tips so you don't make the same mistakes. And because this is YouTube, we're actually going to have a bonus tip. But we need to get started because we came out here dead early in the morning to make this video. It started raining. <laughs> so one of the tips is don't go out making videos at half six in the morning. Sarah, <laughs> let's try and find somewhere where the rain has stopped. Don't do anything for you. We found ourselves a little spot under a tree here. So if the rain does decide to come back, I know my cameras are safe and secure, but more importantly, Sarah's it's hair. Important. She's made it quite clear. <laughs> this isn't gonna be going well if her hair gets wet. But anyway, let's get straight into it. As we say, we got five tips plus that bonus at the end, which stick around because that's the one that actually is potentially saving our marriage. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one is about security, specifically, security devices. Now, a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today, you're gonna to say, yeah, I know that. But the first one I'm going to talk about is something where you go, of course, that's important. But I want you to think about how many of these you actually do, and they're coming with two years of wisdom. So if you're not taking these precautions, what are you doing? So let's start by talking about where you're living, where you're staying. You could be in an Airbnb, mm -hmm. a hotel, a tent even. What we've done since we started traveling is we make use of a makeshift CCTV camera, don't we? Yeah, we do. And this is very easy for you to do and should be free. And that is if you've got an old mobile phone, you're not using a smartphone, not the old Nokia 3310 or something like that, <laughs> you can turn that into a CCTV. The software we use for that is called Alfred. It's available on Apple and Android devices. As I say, totally free. You set that up somewhere in your apartment, you can plug it into the mains when it's there, go out for the day and forget about it. If somebody comes into your apartment, it might only be a cleaner, but if somebody comes in, you get alerted and you get a video that you can download to your phone if something nefarious is taking place. Nice and easy, yeah. but it's one of those things you've got to take the time out. You've got to think about it when you get there and set it up. A lot of people would actually think, I'll get to that another time. And those are the people who are likely to get caught out by this. Don't let that be you, will you? We also carry a simple rubber door wedge that we place under the door so that if anyone does try to get in, it will at least slow them down and hopefully alert us. And another little trick we do is put something precariously on the door handle. So should anyone try that door handle overnight, that item will fall to the floor and again, hopefully alerting us. And what we normally use is a solid glasses case because mm. it sits there right on there. And again, you'll think, well, that's a bit simple a little bit lo-fi you might think well, yeah, low, low tech, tech. <laughs> but the good thing about having low-tech solutions is it doesn't matter where you are it's these lo-fi things and low-tech things you can use that you could do yeah. anywhere in the world you haven't got to go somewhere and go oh, i've not got wi-fi so where we're talking about having alfred on our phones that does require wi-fi in the apartment mm -hmm. but putting something on the back of a door and that kind of yeah. stuff incidentally little bonus in this one we move around the world with a travel safe you might want to consider doing something similar there are many on the market don't get me wrong these aren't amazing things that nobody can get into but basically you can get these safes and you can strap them to something yeah and it's uh, just they the, do add to your weight so they do add to but your weight what would you rather and we'll come to my weight in a <laughs> in a later video but yeah it, it does do that and you know the one we carry has got a cable that you wrap around something so you've got to have something as a fixed object someone could come in bolt cutters and probably even pliers and cut through that but it's the opportunist yeah. thief that we're trying to fend off with something like that mm -hmm. and number two moving on to personal security and remember wherever you are in the world the people that are local know their surroundings far better than you do as a tourist 
Yeah, so anecdotally, just tell you a story of something that happened to me about 35 years ago. I was in Kenya in the town of Mombasa. This is before the time of internet and Google Maps and all that kind of good stuff. And I actually had a guide taking me around the town. There was somewhere I needed to go. We got to a crossroads and at that crossroads, there was another couple there with one of these big old fold out maps we all used <laughs> to <laughs> use. <laughs> and they were looking at it like typical tourists and pointing and then pointed in a direction and headed down a road. Now to me, the road they headed down looked no different to that one, that one, <laughs> or that one. But my guide went white as a sheet and chased after them. Came back to me and said, if they went down that road, things weren't gonna turn out well for them. So spend some time understanding the lie of the land. Where is it the locals consider to be unsafe? Yeah, and then engage your spider senses. This is key. Look around you, who may potentially wish you harm? In our travels, in the last two years, there are three occasions mm -hmm. I can think of where I engage those specific spider senses. Twice in Mexico and once in Thailand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the ones I, I mean. Do. Absolutely. <laughs> and two of those occasions, I thought we were potentially being followed. So what did we do? Did we panic? No. I explained to Sarah, actually, I think on one of them, you, you it was highlighted me. to me. No, I think both, actually. I said, I'm a bit unsure. About that individual. About, yeah, yeah actually, and I said, let's just yeah, pull into right. here a little bit. And... Exactly. So mm. what we did is we moved purposefully in the direction of people in a populous area, and we looked for a big shop. We moved into there and then regrouped. What is it we want to do? What's the plan we're taking from there? And then we executed on that plan and moved on. The other time was actually we were in a bar in Mexico and there was a gentleman in that bar engaging us in conversation a little bit too friendly. It took me a while to cotton on. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't get that feeling straight away. Yeah, he seemed he like did. a really nice yeah. fellow, but I was starting to think about why is he being as yeah. friendly as he is? And you might think, well, that's, that's not fair of you, Neil, to do stuff like that. But let me give you an example of something you can relate to. You know, when you're at home, having a nice day and your phone rings and it's some salesman the other end of the phone saying, hi, Dave, how are you doing? Are you having a great afternoon? I'm gonna call you Dave. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? Why would they call me Dave? Well, actually, that's when they really don't know. Yeah, yeah, they call you and they go, <laughs> hi, Neil, how are you doing? Are you having a great afternoon? You don't even know they are. All of a sudden, they've become your best friend. And you know, it's not out of their, my interest, it's out of their interest that they're yeah. doing it. Mm -hmm. And that was something I felt yeah, with this individual. Yeah, just got the sense. The good thing about Sarah is she will follow my lead. She'll know when I'm changing <laughs> yeah. gears yeah. and she'll follow me. And in that specific instance, I was as friendly back to him as he was to me. And then I remembered, we had that urgent appointment we needed to get to. <laughs> it's probably really strange, we're in Mexico. Yeah. So I said to Sarah, come on, we gotta go, and yeah. headed for the door. We headed for the door, and he just waved and said, really good to meet you, you too, and we left. So in all three of those occasions, did those people mean us harm? I don't think so, no. probably all three of them not. But if you've got a hunch about something, believe it follow it because often your hunch mm -hmm. is Absolutely. right. You have to be totally responsible for yourself. Don't rely on somebody else to do it for you. Having said all that, we <laughs> move on to the third tip and that is enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. Now you've spent probably months or years planning your travels, so don't ruin it by being fearful and suffering from overwhelm. We never have, have we? No, no, never, never have. It's not just overcoming that fear it's also realizing where you are and making sure that you see where you are so we had a specific example in Athens we went to the Acropolis and there was so caught up on making a cinematic video and obviously pleasing you guys out there <laughs> and Which didn't. it wasn't until and actually we, we was walking around just videoing and it wasn't until Neil came back and edited that he thought, I didn't even see that. And it's a real shame. It's an iconic landmark to see and he didn't even see it. Yeah. So I saw everything through a lens of a camera. Yeah. Never again. That was a big lesson. Mm. And also, I had this idea, I'm going to make this cinematic no, video. Yeah. It's going to be great go viral. <laughs> it's going to be, a, and no one was interested. No one was interested. No, you had some lovely comments on that one. It's yeah, good. I did. Did, yeah, but, but you didn't see it and it's that's a shame i wanted hundreds of thousands of views on that one <laughs> if you want to turn that around and and change my history go back about two years was it 
near, nearly two years ago, yeah, yeah. I can't remember, and find the one called Acropolis. Ah, oh, it's a mate. Oh, I'm not going to go on about it. Also, as humans, we have a propensity to think ahead and really look forward to things. That's right, and that can be to the detriment of now. So you may well be planning for your travels. It, it could be a vacation, it could be anything, and you look forward. So you wake up in the morning, you, you're, you're there in bed, you're thinking, oh, I've got to go to work today. But in three months' yeah. time, three <laughs> months, two weeks, and three days, I'm going to be in that location, and I'm going to wake up, and the sun's going to be shining through the curtains, and I'm going to put the those. coffee on, and then I'm going to throw the curtains open, step out my balcony with my coffee, and look out <laughs> at this amazing vista. What about now? Mm -hmm. What about the things that you're removing the joy from today because of looking forward to the future? You may be going to a friend's birthday party. Yep. Gotta say, we're going to a birthday party we today. Are. It's mine. And I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. But I'm also enjoying in the here and Absolutely. now in making this video. You may well be going to the theatre or all seeing your favourite band. And when you're there, I don't want you in the back of your mind going, Oh, oh, I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the food is like when we're in that location. Enjoy the here Enjoy and now. now. That we is are the more big than guilty tip of doing that. Yeah, more it's a big guilty. tip from us. We've done that a lot, but now we slow down a little mm. bit. We rein it in. And the fourth tip is eat like a local. So Neil and I suffer from this and we'd actually love to know whether it's just us or whether you have the same problem. Please let us know in the comments. Yeah, we don't actually <laughs> suffer from it anymore. We used to look at other people who travel like us and think they're getting into the rhythm and, and doing things like eating crazy local food much sooner yeah. than we are. <laughs> but then we stop and look back at what we do and go, well, we We're are doing traveling. the same thing, yeah. <laughs> but we may be a little bit slower to get to it than they are. And that's absolutely fine. It's not a competition, no. is it? So we got a couple of tips here for you on this, and that is, if you get to a location, you want to try the food, you see all the street food around, but you're a little bit suffering from trepidation of what's <laughs> going to happen when you walk up to that street food. It's only server. a language barrier. Yeah, exactly. Tip is, go to a mall. They're all around the world, and in there, you'll find there's a food court. And in that food court, they'll have the food you're looking for. The locals are in there eating it as well. Yeah. Two things you can guarantee in that food court. <laughs> First is, the food is not the best. It will not be the best type of the food you're looking to eat. The second thing though, is you'll see pictures of it and you'll be able to have a chance to stand back, look at the menu, work it out for yourself and then order it. You may do and that. And you can point at a board. Yeah, you yeah, can do that. <laughs> you may do that a couple of times to start to feel comfortable and then you can unleash yeah. yourself on the street traders or go into some quirky little backstreet restaurant because <laughs> you know what it is you like and you can explain how you want it cooked. And the other benefit of this is when you taste that real authentic food, not from a mall. I said mall, didn't I? Oh. You are American viewers. It's a mall. I'm talking about a mall. Mall. No, mall. not mall. Mall. <laughs> Mall's a little thing that burrows underground. <laughs> so, a that's mall. how I remember how you're no, supposed to mall. say it. Like being mauled by a lion. That's what I say. It, we're no, really you're not supposed street. to say it. You're supposed yeah. to say mall. <laughs> but for our American viewers, it's a mall. And number five is document your journey. So we are obviously YouTubers and we are videoing our travels around the world. And that's not for everyone. It's, to be honest, a real undertaking, so we can appreciate that. But if you are thinking of taking that on, please let us know in the comments and maybe we can give you some advice. But that doesn't mean you're off the hook. Far from it. You're going to get old. We all do. Feel it now. Yeah, so I want <laughs> you to pay it forward to your future self. And what that means is, you want to document yeah. what you're doing. I'll give you an example. And this relates to our travels. In the last two years, we've traveled to many countries, many, many towns and villages and cities in five continents. There's a lot to take mm. in. And I remember, I was saying to you just yesterday, uh, we were recounting some of our travels. And when I said to Sarah about someone we met in Mexico, she said, I just, I just can't remember what you mean. Yeah, you know, we were in that town. Yeah, and picture it. Uh, yeah, you couldn't get it. And I said, yeah, you had a, you had a big white hat. A big white hat. So I remembered, <laughs> ah, poncho. one of our previous videos, that bar I was in that, uh, that we're referring to was actually in the background. So I scrubbed, I went back to yeah. our old video, scrubbed through the video and found that part. So you remember that? And you went, ah, oh, 
Yes. Straight away. Uh, well, you had pizza in yeah. there with friends yeah. a few days later. Yeah. Said, yes, I did. So that video was the key that unlocked Sarah's memory. Mm -hmm. So why not plan ahead as to how you're going to document your journey? I'll tell you how not to do it. Here's a great bit of advice what not to do, and that is pull out your phone at mm. every opportunity and snap and snap. We and, see and this so many times. We see it all the time. Times. Everybody's taking the same photograph. It means that's no longer special. You need to curate your experience. Also, I'll let you into a little secret here. Not many people are interested in your photos and where you've been. Let me give you a little memory from your childhood. It's certainly a memory from mine. Remember when you were young and your dad, he'd go into the understairs cupboard and pull out the old projector, the cine projector, set it all up, get the next door neighbors round, put the reels on, sit them down with a cup of coffee and say, this is our holiday. When we went down to a little caravan park in Cornwall or something like that, I used to cringe. In fact, I'm cringing now <laughs> thinking about our poor neighbours who had to sit through that. Now, when you pull out your photos on your phone and you're saying, all right, Dave, this is where we went on already. Look, Dave doesn't care. Dave stood there going, I want to go get some lunch. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is about your memory, what you can lock into your head. What can you do? Here's a few ideas, but we're not going to be prescriptive here because to be prescriptive is to cut back on your own personal imagination of how you can be creative for yourself. What's the first one? Could be your private Instagram feed where you can just keep that for yourself and not share it with anyone. Yeah, and you put your photos and videos mm -hmm. on there that you can refer back to in the future, or maybe a journal. You might yeah. be a journaler and you would write Writing down out. something that happened today. It might be just basic stuff, or you might want to wax lyrical. You might want to say, I stepped out onto the balcony this morning with my coffee, mm -hmm. and there was an amazing vista. I dreamed of this for three or four months. You know, whatever you want to do, yeah. you stick it down there. It could be anything. In fact, if you've got any cool ideas of what it could be, stick it in the comments below. And if you're watching this thinking, hey, I quite like this, check those comments because you might yeah, see something yeah. down there that you could do. And the bonus tip. Bonus, 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 bonus. <laughs> I thought I'd done something wrong then. No, go on, go for it. <laughs> Tell them the bonus tip, Sarah. Well, this list is extensive, obviously. So we've only taken just a, a snippet, really. We had a long list of 20, 20 plus. So if you'd find it helpful for us to do another video on this, please let us know in the comments. Do you know what? Having a bonus on a YouTube video is incredible because this video has cost you nothing to watch. So you've got it for free and then you get a bonus thrown in <laughs> for free. So this big one, we call this one the divorce saver, the marriage <laughs> saver, if you will. And that is to have no blame culture. Yes. We both have our own jobs as we travel and Sarah and I are particularly well organized. So we don't tend to lose passports or leave Cards. phones in, yeah, mm -hmm. or leave phones in bars and restaurants. But when we do screw up, and we do, mainly she does. No, I can think of... You do? Like, oh, we're okay, getting into a blame thing. Go getting it, we're, we're getting into a blame thing again. <laughs> no, but we're not. When we do, we don't It's both blame. our response. So immediately it comes to mind, maybe one of us has left a piece of luggage as we get up from a cafe, but it's both uh, of our jobs to remember that uh, bag. This is the blame no, no, thing. No, you're, because... you're thinking back to when we were oh, okay. in, in yes, the so. US two years ago, no, it happened recently, but it doesn't matter because you're not used to carrying a bag, I am. So the important thing is that we don't blame each other. We deal with the issue and then afterwards, if required, we may have a bit of a debrief post-mortem mm -hmm. to make sure it doesn't happen again. But it classic so corporate. Yeah, I know, but that's life, isn't it? But the yeah. important thing here is no blame. Yeah. If you travel on your own, don't beat yourself up. If, with, if you're with your partner, don't beat your partner up. And both know where your passports are and stuff like that. Yeah. Next time, we're going to tell you how you can have it all. You can travel the world on a budget. Yes, you can do it. And we're going to tell you just how you do that. And you're going to see that in a video right down here next week. But you've been watching To Go Rome, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.